PlayStation Now is Sony's crack at cloud gaming or game streaming. The service allows for users to stream an honestly huge number of games to either their PlayStation 4 or their PC. But in 2020, is there a place for this service? Does it make sense? And most importantly, does it work? Hopefully all questions, which will be answered by the end of this video. So let's first dig a little bit deeper into the service. What do you need? How does it work? And how much does it cost? So as we said, there's currently two methods of accessing PlayStation Now. Uh, first one on your PlayStation 4, where the PlayStation Now application is already installed. You just need to sign up to access it. Or on a Windows PC, where you just need to download the PlayStation Now application. You'll note there I specifically said Windows PC, because at the time of recording this, that is currently the only OS supported for PlayStation Now. So unlike other streaming services that we've looked at, Project X Cloud, GeForce Now, Stadia, Shadow, which all let you play on your mobile device, and with some even offering Mac and Linux support, uh, PlayStation Now is only available on good old Windows. Damn, Bill! But is there a difference between using the service on the PlayStation 4 or a Windows PC? Well, one big one, while the Windows application allows you to stream the library of games, PlayStation 4 gives you an option to either stream those games or download them to play them locally on your console. Doing so allows you to avoid any complications that come with streaming a game, some of which we'll get into later. So a couple of specs you need to know about before diving in. Uh, firstly, PlayStation Now is currently only offering a max resolution of 720. That's both to the PlayStation 4 and the PC. Although, as we noted, if you do download the game on the PlayStation 4 and run it locally, that does allow you to run it in its native resolution. In terms of controllers, are you restricted to just the DualShock 4? Well, no. And yes. Uh, PlayStation do a good job at sidestepping this question in their FAQs. Uh, technically, other controllers are supported, but not recommended. One of the big reasons for this seems to be losing features in games which rely on DualShock 4 hardware, namely talking about the touchpad. But, I mean, name five games that you are unable to complete without using the touchpad. I'll wait. So you've picked your platform, the console or the PC, you've grabbed your DualShock 4. If you've grabbed anything else, PlayStation doesn't want to know about it. What else do you need? Let's talk internet speeds, the be all of cloud gaming. PlayStation states to use PlayStation Now, users should have a minimum of five meg of download speed. That is the lowest entry point for cloud gaming of any of the services we've looked at so far, albeit the max resolution is at 720. But I mean, Project xCloud is capped at the same resolution right now, but their minimum entry download speed is 10 megs, so it's twice as much. But then again, they are officially still in beta. So the only other thing you'll need is an active PlayStation Network account with an active payment method attached to it. And to jump straight in, PlayStation Now offers a seven day free trial, after which they will automatically sign you up you can opt out for this auto renewal, but after which PlayStation will take $8.99 per month for the privilege to use this service. Alternatively, you can opt to pay $22.99 a quarter or $49.99 a year. All of these prices are in Great British Pounds. Um, do the conversion yourself. I'm not the post office. So with all of those details out of the way, Mark, what did you think? In my testing, although I use the officially supported platforms, the PlayStation 4 console and a regular Windows PC, for my regulars, you'll be glad to know, yes, I also went the uh, less traditional route and I did test this out on Shadow Cloud PC, which is um, interesting to say the least, because technically what you're doing here is playing the stream of a stream. We'll get into that. So first up, the PlayStation 4. Uh, this was probably the easiest method to get on with. As I mentioned, the PlayStation Now application is pre-installed on PlayStation 4 consoles. There's no need to navigate the PlayStation Store to find it and download it. You can just jump straight in. During this part of the testing, I had no issues with the controller, essentially because I'm using the controller that was designed for that system. And you'll see why I'm stating this very obvious point in a minute. Launching into PlayStation Now's application, which uses the same UI across all platforms, is reminiscent of a Netflix with games, separated out by popularity, recently added and genre. Although one immediate sneaky trick uh, for a store that currently has over 800 titles, there is no search bar. <laughs> and like I had to double check this and ended up Googling it as well. From the looks of it, this seems to be 100% intentional. Uh, PlayStation want you to look through their gigantic library and find other titles that you wanna play later on to keep you using the service instead of searching for the game that you're looking for and jumping straight to it. So after picking a game and launching it, as we mentioned, uh, this is the one platform that will give you an option to either stream the game or download it. 
but for the purposes of this testing in this video, we're only looking at streaming. Just to note, my PlayStation 4 is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. My router is only about two feet away and my local download speed averages between sort of 300 and 350 megs. Yes, it might be slightly better if it was a wired connection, but because of that higher download speed that I have locally, it should balance it out. So my opinion of the streaming quality of the PlayStation 4 solution is it's actually pretty good. Visually, even at 720, if you throw it up on a decent TV, it still looks good. The stream quality is actually pretty impressive with almost no occurrences of tearing, compression artifacts, or video or audio stutters. But for me, the noticeable issue is with the input delay. Even as a veteran of cloud gaming who's tested most of the platforms out there, um, even I would class it as noticeable input delay. Now, that's not to say unplayable, uh, but we've talked about this on the channel before. My standard for success of a game streaming or cloud gaming service is that it lets you forget that you are not playing that game locally. And unfortunately, that just isn't the case here, which you can imagine when moving away from the console where the service is truly at home and slapping it onto Windows comes with its own set of issues. Again, this connection was over Wi-Fi and just using your bog standard Lenovo laptop running Windows 10. I'll say now both of my Windows experiences, uh, installation of the application and continuous launching of games came with uh, some strange quirks. So on the laptop, uh, this time the stream quality was less stable than it was on the PlayStation, despite the laptop being the same distance away from my router, still using the same speed internet. Still only occasionally there was the presence of compression artifacts, stutters in both the audio and the video, and increased input delay when compared to the PlayStation 4. Which just highlights some potential optimization issues on Sony's side when they're running on a platform that isn't their own. So whereas on the PlayStation 4 we described the input delay as noticeable, this was more so, and I probably estimate it to be around about half a second. Still, even with the input delay we've described for the PlayStation 4 and the PC, I wouldn't classify either of them as unplayable. For the majority of titles, and for your casual gamer, I'd probably say they wouldn't even notice, uh, it really only comes into play uh, certain types of games, maybe first-person shooters, racing games, and at this stage I would probably rule out online competitive games. And then finally, to answer a question all of my regulars want to know, can you play PlayStation Now on Shadow? Is it even possible to play a stream of a stream? Because technically, let's break it down here. What's happening here is there's input from the controller, which is transmitted by my local ISP up to the Shadow data center and my virtual machine, where it's registered on that machine, which is then uploaded from there through Shadow's ISP to the Sony data center and registered on their server, which in turn streams the image back down to the Shadow virtual machine, which is then in turn streamed back down through my ISP, decoded and displayed on my screen. So at this point you're thinking, Mark, there's no way that works. Eh. Outright, I'll say I do not recommend this solution for Shadow customers, but if you're dying to play a PlayStation exclusive and this is your only option, it's doable. Uh, image quality here is degraded even further. Again, we're watching a stream of a stream that started life at 720p resolution. Uh, surprisingly though, there's less tearing and stutters than I saw on the laptop. But then if you think about it, I get great streaming quality down from Shadow. They have gigabit down and 100 meg upload speeds to handle the PlayStation stream. Uh, it's just the adding up of those two which presents the problems. And the biggest problem here, which you may have already guessed, is the input delay which for this solution I would estimate at just under one second. This makes things like uh, moving the camera or quick changes in direction super disorientating because by the time you go to make your next move, the stream has just caught up with your last move. That being said, I still managed to play a good half hour of Marvel's Spider-Man without dying, so it just goes to show it's not unplayable, just offensive to anyone with eyes or ears. Weirdly, with this solution, it presented a whole other range of hiccups with the PlayStation Now application, which had nothing to do with the fact it was running on Shadow. Uh, the first time I tried to launch a game, it got stuck at preparing game, uh, which I looked this up, appears to be a common issue. Multiple times trying to launch into games, uh, I had it where the controller inputs were being picked up by PlayStation Now, so I could exit out, but the game itself wasn't taking any controller inputs, so I couldn't actually start the game or control it. I could only control PlayStation Now. 
Again, this happened multiple times. So what have we learned from all this? Who is this service for? And ultimately, would I recommend it? Firstly, it's apparent the service is better optimized to run on their own hardware, with the cracks beginning to show when trying to use the Windows solution. Regardless of which option you choose, it seems like optimization is something that is an issue for the service as a whole, with input lag being apparent in both, and at a level I describe as noticeable, even compared to other cloud gaming solutions. Overall, for the price of $8.99, uh, it's in line with sort of a Netflix subscription. Yes, it's more expensive than uh, Xbox Game Pass, for example, which is $3.99 a month. But when comparing the two, PlayStation Now comes with over 800 titles, whereas Xbox Game Pass has just over 100. So you're looking at eight times the amount of games for just over twice the price. The selection of games is decent. Obviously, with a number like that, there's a chunk of random third-party titles, uh, no offense, dot clock the toasted sandwich of time. But the reason we talked about it recently was because of the likes of newer titles being added like Marvel's Spider-Man, Control and Just Cause 4. If you do own a PlayStation 4 and have both the storage space and the patience to download the titles, then literally most of the issues we've discussed in this video do go away but then it's no longer a streaming service. The ability to play on PC does open the door for PC gamers who maybe don't own a PlayStation console and have always wanted to try some PlayStation exclusives. But let's face it, PC gamers are used to a certain standard, and it's just one that I'm not sure PlayStation now offers with its 720 resolution, slightly buggy application, and above average input delay. But if you're a user of PlayStation Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the service down in the comments down below, as well as which solution to use, uh, the PlayStation 4 or a PC. But other than that, if you found the video helpful or somewhat entertaining, a like rating would be appreciated. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And as always, I shall see you in the next one.